With just over five weeks left until the midterm elections, this week we turn to Pennsylvania and two high-profile races expected to have a significant impact on both the state and country's political futures. With control of the U.S. Senate on the line, Pennsylvania voters could determine if Democrats maintain their majority. Is the country headed in the right direction? Mehmet Oz, a TV doctor turned Republican Senate candidate, is running against the state's lieutenant governor, Democrat John Fetterman, to fill the seat of retiring Republican Senator Pat Toomey. In this hotly contested race, Fetterman is painting Oz as an out-of-touch outsider who doesn't care about Pennsylvanians. Can we get this room so loud that we can let him hear it in New Jersey right now? While Oz continues to question the health of Fetterman, who suffered a stroke in May. And in one of the most watched races for governor, Pennsylvania Attorney General Josh Shapiro, a Democrat, running against Republican State Senator Doug Mastriano. Shapiro is facing questions about whether his low-key style will energize Democratic voters, while Mastriano is a leading voice advancing Donald Trump's lies about election fraud. He was also at the U.S. Capitol on the day of the insurrection. In both races, issues such as reproductive rights, the economy, crime, public safety is why I ran for office, and education, they're indoctrinating our children at schools with critical race theory, are expected to be deciding factors for voters. To help us dig into the dynamics of both races in Pennsylvania, I'm joined by Jonathan Tamari, national political reporter for the Philadelphia Inquirer, and Candy Woodall, Congress and Campaigns reporter for USA Today. Thank you both for being with us. And let's start with the Senate race, because early this past summer, Democrat John Fetterman looked like he was going to cruise to victory over his Republican opponent, Mehmet Oz, but the polls have tightened in recent weeks, and now it's a more competitive race. So, Jonathan, give us a sense of what's happening. Yeah, so I think what we saw in the summer was a function of the two different primaries that the candidates went through. Uh, Oz went through a brutal Republican primary with a ton of spending, both for him and also against him. There were a lot of attacks on him as being not really conservative. Uh, the, his opponents brought up some of his past statements on things like guns and abortion to say he didn't really believe in conservative values. And he ended up winning a little less than a third of the Republican vote. So there was seven in 10 Republicans, you know, who chose somebody else in their primary. Uh, and on the other hand, Fetterman just cruised through the Democratic primary and won basically in a romp. So he had the Democratic primary, uh, Democratic electorate united with him from the start. Oz had a lot of work to do to get even his base voters, the base Republicans, on board with him after that primary. And what it looks like has happened is that those voters have now eventually started to come home to Oz and are now supporting him. And look, it's Pennsylvania. When both parties uh, have their bases activated, it's pretty evenly split. And that's what we're starting to see in that Senate race. And Candy, while Mehmet Oz, the Republican, has narrowed the polling gap, there is polling that shows Pennsylvanians still seeing him somewhat unfavorably. There's still a lack of enthusiasm for him as a candidate. How is he trying to address that? I'm not sure that he is addressing his deficiencies yet at this point. That's what analysts and pollsters are saying, and they say that's hurting him, that he's not addressing some of those things. Um, instead, he seems to be taking the fight to Fetterman, and he's running a ton of ads. Um, he's getting a lot of money and help and support from the National Senatorial Committee and also the Senate Leadership Fund. They're trying to flip control of the Senate. They want to be the majority party, and they're putting a lot of money, about $16 million in a month, uh, into TV ads in Pennsylvania. That's They're trying to paint Fetterman as soft on crime. So he seems to be addressing this by going on more offense. Let's talk about the, the governor's race, uh, Jonathan, because polling in that contest shows Democrat Josh Shapiro. He's still leading Republican Doug Mastriano by double digits. So why are Republican voters at the moment not coalescing around Mastriano in the same way that they are around Oz? Matt Mastriano, you know, in, it was kind of the opposite case. He won his primary much more easily than Oz did. But Mastriano is a much more extreme figure from the far right an election denier, a leading election denier who was at the Capitol on January 6th, although he says he did not go into the building. Uh, he says that he would ban abortion with no exceptions whatsoever. He's tried to kind of walk that back, but at other times he's reinforced it, and that does appear to be his position. 
And he has really done no outreach to voters who are outside of his original base of support. He pretty much speaks only to very far right media. His events are, are until very recently largely closed. And so he's only speaking to people who already support him. So there's even a significant segment of Republicans, more moderate Republicans and swing voters that are just not coming around to Mastriano. And importantly, we talk about TV spending. He has not run a single ad on television. And that's hard to win in a state that's as large as Pennsylvania without being on television. Shapiro has spent over $20 million on television. Hmm. It's basically unheard of to see that kind of disparity. And Candy, on the issues, nationally you have Republicans trying to make, to make the midterms about the economy, inflation, immigration, and crime. Democrats are hoping that reproductive rights will be a dominant political issue, which seem to be resonating in Pennsylvania in these two races that we're talking about. Uh, I think it's, you know, not to be too cliche, but it's kind of a base race. And, you know, the abortion issue is rallying a lot of Democrats. But as we've seen in even other states during the primary, it also is motivating independents and Republicans. I think the question that even Democrats are trying to figure out leading up to the midterms is how motivating will it be on November 8th? Keep in mind that's going to be the beginning of the holiday season. Families that were already struggling are going to be squeezed even more. So how do people feel when they're voting you know, on November 8th about their economic position? That could have a bit, big impact, but I'm not sure we know that answer yet as to what is the most motivating. I would also add that Republicans nationally, like we're seeing with Oz making the issue with Fetterman about crime, that is definitely part of a national strategy. And we are seeing Republicans in every battleground state and really across the map making, trying to make the issue crime. Candy Woodall and Jonathan Tamari, thank you both for your insights. I appreciate it. Thank you.